Okay, folks, well now to address the system, what we're going to do, obviously you click on system, you get the system window open. And this first section here, general, you basically don't have to pay attention to as far as racing goes because you've got obviously the starter, clutch, and alternator controls in this window. Again, we don't have to worry about that. Air conditioning in this particular case is not something we have to worry about because you can see here with the factory settings the way they are, 7,083 RPM for both disable and re-enable. And of course, for disable TPS, 200%, which there's no such thing in this car anyway in the real world, and re-enable at 197. This is basically the factory calibration. Uh, it's General Motors' way of saying to the PCM, don't worry about air conditioning. You know, there's a separate head unit that takes care of that. What we are interested in here in system is in the fans. Now, you notice fan type, you've got pulse width modulated electric. Now, this particular car does still have the fan module. You can set it for discrete, which is what you'd use to run a relay. In this case, we still have this original box. And what we are going to do is run down here to this section. You've got fan desired percent. Now you've got here versus ECT versus engine coolant temperature, and you've got versus AC. This is your air conditioning table. You don't have to worry about this one because we're not, you know, again, we don't have air conditioning. But in case you're curious, if you've got a car that you do have air conditioning in for some reason on a track, this is what you've got is you've got your pressures, obviously, for air conditioning versus fan. On the coolant temperature side, this is the one that we're more interested in. Now you'll see here in the factory calibration, at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, this fan is at its maximum setting of 90. The fan basically turns on with a 15% duty cycle at 199 Fahrenheit. At 210 degrees Fahrenheit, you got 39% duty cycle. Now, I will issue a little word of warning, so that I've experienced those guys that are building their first engine for racing. Uh, there's no point in changing these fan settings unless your engine has been built to run at a lower temperature. Now, some guys out there, for instance, boat racers, you know, you've got the biggest radiator in the world. You've got the lake or the ocean that, that, you know, you're riding on. If your engine was built by the machine shop to run at 160 Fahrenheit, flat out, normal operating temperature, then yes, you can have a fan turned on at a much higher speed, or I should say a much lower temperature. For those guys that are road racing, if your machinist didn't build that engine to run cooler than 220, 230, not much point in changing this. Now, in this particular case, what we are going to do, just as, you know, for the sake of showing you what you can do, you can, of course, end up initiating these settings however you like. Let's say you wanted maximum cooling to begin at uh, 214 Fahrenheit. It's literally this simple. You can obviously interpolate on the way, you know, basically select the two endpoint cells. You've got interpolating between horizontal bounds, between vertical bounds. When you end up clicking these buttons, basically you'll see it's up these values. So if you want to do it that way, you can. But again, it's not going to hurt if you have a bunch of zeros, then suddenly jump up to 90. It's going to seem like the fan's operating in a discrete setting, rather pulse width modulated. But again, once you've entered in the values that you want to run, we'll stick with these for this particular car. You can then go over and save your file. And once you've saved your file, what we'll do next, we're not going to go into fuel system because again, this car being a race car, we've got a fuel cell. We've got a separate fuel sender and gauge in the car. We don't have to worry about this because there's nothing that can hurt us here as far as distraction goes when we're racing. Same goes for transmission diagnostics because we don't have an automatic in this car. We've got a four-speed Jericho. However, we will go into the trans section here because what we're going to do is just change the skip shift so that we don't get a light for that. Now here in the transmission section, if you click on transmission, you're going to notice here you've got auto shift properties and manual CAGs. Manual CAGs is computer aided gear selection. That's the skip shift, the first to fourth skip shift. Obviously, auto shift properties, we don't have these any of those tables for the transmission because this is not an automatic transmission calibration from the factory. It's set up as a manual, as you can see. But if we go over here to the CAG section, you'll notice here that the skip shift, you've got the table set up. So you've got a disable TPS, which basically means anything above 13% throttle it'll disable the skip shift. Minimum coolant temperature for throttle the skip shift to happen is 171 Fahrenheit. Obviously anything below 171, skip shift will not activate. Same goes for vehicle speeds. You've got enable speed and disable speed. So this is telling you that the vehicle has to be between 16 and 19 miles per hour when you're attempting the first to second shift for the PCM to force you over into fourth. And same goes for your barometric temp uh, pressures here rather. So easiest way to kick this off is for disable TPS. You could set it for something low like 1, 2, 3%. And coolant temperature, you could set up high at like 274. 
just changing these two gives you a measure of redundancy. Basically, what's going to happen now, the TPS is going to see that any, uh, the PCM rather is going to see anytime TPS is above 2%, don't bother activating skip shift. Anytime coolant temperature is below 274 Fahrenheit, which is hopefully always, don't bother activating the CAG skip shift. This we're putting in just for sake of redundancy so that the PCM doesn't flag a code. We will end up making those modifications in this engine diagnostic section as well, which we're going to tackle this section right now. Uh, as always, save your calibration first, then come back here and we're going to open up engine diagnostics.